Welcome everyone to another video and today I'm going to be talking about laser engraving on aluminium. So I'm not going to be laser engraving on bare aluminium because CO2 laser machines aren't able to do that uh, unless you've got a laser marking spray which is a, sh a good idea for, for another video that I'll do soon. Uh, but this is material that we do sell. It's coated aluminium. So we have got different types of colors and it's very similar to the two color plastic. So whenever you engrave the top color way, the bottom, the bottom color comes through. So I'm gonna be showing you guys also again, the versatility of this, of this machine. So it's not just always about the arts and crafts and doing, um, you know, uh, wall art and home decor and stuff like that. It can actually be, obviously it can also do industrial purposes too. Uh, so this material is very good for identification. So when uh, clients are manufacturing uh, machines and all that kind of stuff, they need something like a plate at the back of the machine for identification um, uh, purposes and stuff like that. Um, the mines also can use this type of, of material. And um, yeah, and not only that, but also trophies. People in the trophy industry, it's good for a, like a plaque on the base, uh, the wooden base or something like that. So, which is also a, a good use for this. And there's also many other uses. You can also do it for some uh, signage, um, indoor signage and so forth, um, which, uh, which will also work uh, quite well. Um, yeah, so let me show you exactly uh, the, the settings that I had to use to get the engraving 100% perfect for the laserable aluminium. Okay, so yeah, you can see how crazy it was with all the testing. I was trying to do, I was changing so many settings that I had to start writing it all down because I was actually forgetting. So I, originally I went a little bit more in focus, 1.5, 1.6, uh, different powers. And then I was also changing the DPR, 430 DPR, um, 450 DPR, uh, 480 and 500 and I'm not gonna lie this material was a little bit tricky to get correct because I wanted to get it absolutely black You know, I've heard so many times from clients that want this absolutely black color on the silver And then obviously I was going for the bigger blocks But I was getting a bit of banding as you can see there So the banding was throwing me off and I had a feeling even from my previous videos that I feel like the extraction is actually affecting the um, the airflow so they also because of this material is so finicky even a little bit that was a little bit higher raised a little bit can actually even affect this um, this finish so I wasn't happy with everything until I actually got uh, more of this kind of finish which was then what I actually had to do was I had to even go unidirectional instead of going bi-directional I went unidirectional and I also had it more on the far left and vertical I found that exactly on what you're seeing here, the extraction pump is a little bit right behind it. So I felt that the air was flowing more towards the left, top left hand side of the machine. And it was actually creating less of those banding. And that is exactly, you see, like here you can see that there's not so much debris on those vents. But as soon as you go left, and there you can actually see in the, in the hole there, you can actually see that it's there, uh, the actual extraction. So this is when I went unilateralism, um, uh, where I wanted it to be a, a solid black block. You know, I really wanted that. I was trying very hard to get that finish. I don't want any banding. I don't want anything. I just wanted to be completely solid. And you can see here, I managed to do that. And it was just so crazy how how fickle it is, you know, how, how uh, you know, getting this material 100%. Uh, and I went online and there are a lot of other brands are, are the same, you know, this, this material in general is a little bit harder to get. So here I was also just um, doing a bit of a laser mark uh, where I was uh, going to then cut the material in the uh, shear cutter that we'd also sell. So we do sell the sheets, um, 600 by 300 if I'm not mistaken and then you can cut it down to whatever size you want So me doing that a quick laser mark was just helping to align the the sheet So when I cut it and here I was just doing the we also it's, uh, do different colors. So yeah, I was just doing the different um, uh, Markings on the different colors and here is a, a crimp tool We uh, you can make a hole in the corners plus you can actually round it off the, doing the rounding the cornered rounders the rounded corners is using a different tool 
but um, yeah, geez, this this material was definitely a little bit of of a, of a thing. You know, it was very um, finicky. Um, but you know, on this, when I did the text, I didn't do unilateralism. I actually did it bi-directional. Okay, so this was the design. Um, you can see that I had it uh, vertical uh, because I found that uh, the engraving was a lot, uh, was better, especially with the solid black block. Look, to be honest with you, um, if this was a whole batch of things, um, I would put it across and I wouldn't even really tell the difference because it's text, it's not a, it is a big difference between engraving a solid black block and doing individual uh, text. Uh, doing the individual text was a lot easier. In actual fact, uh, on the setting with the black block, I had this on unilateralism instead of bi-directional. And, um, and it came out fine. All I wanted to do was I was trying to get the, as, the dark as black as possible um, with no imperfections, just so I knew where to, what to do from there, where I could um, manipulate it from there. So I knew that the text you, you, you can, you know, it's not a solid black block, so I can get away with it on the text. So that's why having it as bi-directional, I didn't see any real change in, in the quality of the outcome. Um, so that's, and also if you're going to do a whole batch of these, you don't want to then do unilateralism. It's going to take far too long. And also, um, I don't think that the, the airflow is going to affect this too much. It might do, but then you might have to maybe put them slightly maybe have three going across and then all of them going down on the, on the, on the left hand side of the, of the uh, machine. Depending on how fickle, look this material was a bit fickle, so it depends on how fickle it was you know, with the material that you're using. Um, and then just, so these are the settings. So over here I've actually saved it in the, in the media library and I just wanted to let you know that uh, I was also eventually what I did over all doing all the tests that I didn't go more in focus. I actually went slightly out of focus and the focus was 3.6 on the Z axis. So I used that setting rather than uh, being in focus because when I was in focus I noticed that there was a bit of like, um, the, it wasn't like a, a matte black, it was more like more of a shiny black when I was in focus and I didn't like that. So I wanted it to, to be more of a matte black, not where it shines when you move the the, the actual material from left to right, you know. So on here, I actually had it at a thousand millimeters per second, 80% power, 3.6 uh, on the Z axis, air assist off, and I, and I actually had it on the 500 uh, DPR. That's what I actually landed off uh, on with. And um, yeah, it actually came out quite nice. Once you get all the settings, it came out quite nice. Look, this would be a little bit of a struggle if you had to do like a whole image and stuff like that, um, you can pretty much do it, but this material is a little bit, um, uh, it can be a little bit uh, tough to get right, especially if it's not 100% flat. I have also read online that if the material is not 100% flat, that also affects, and through my experience, I did also see that that happening, is that if it's not exactly on the same plane, that can also affect uh, the material. But once you've got all your bases uh, in place, then it really does, um, it, it is definitely something that you can uh, use and sell to your clients. Uh, you can also use this material for um, laser fiber lasers as well. So it's not just CO2s, but I've got some clients that also use this for fiber lasers. So on the cutting side, obviously there's no cutting. This was just for alignment purposes. So yeah, so these are my settings uh, moving forward and I hope that it really does help you guys. Okay, so there we go. So those are the actual uh, tips and the tricks that I need to do to get this um, engraving 100%. So, you know, I was obviously splitting hairs. Um, you know, I actually wanted to get it exactly as black as I could, and I wanted to get uh, the area um, a nice big black block because I didn't want any type of change in the engraving. And I was kind of really nitpicking and really trying to make sure that I was able to get it 100%. And I didn't even, I had a feeling in the previous videos that e extraction, the airflow, does affect uh, the finish on engraving, especially when it comes to very uh, finicky engraving where it's um, something as subtle as that can actually affect the engraving. So it was actually driving me a little bit crazy trying to figure out how to get that engraving 100% perfect, but eventually I got there. And uh, yeah, it's just quite fascinating how 
like I said, the airflow can affect the engraving. So um, yeah, I hope this helps. I hope that, um, look, I'll also be doing, in, as, as time goes, I will be doing uh, these types of settings uh, for the Nova series. So I know there's a lot of clients that do have the Nova machine. And uh, yeah, I will be doing this as well in getting the right settings and, 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 and uh, also giving you my, uh, all the tips and the tricks and everything that I've learned using those machines. Um, so yeah, it's, um, we sell this type of material. So if you wanna go have a look on our website, you can see all the different colors that we are listing and we're selling. Uh, and we also, you, you can buy the sheets, cut it down, as you saw in the video, cut it down with our shear cutter. And then also you can crimp the, the edges as well. You can make holes, you can corner, have rounded edges on the corners and stuff like that too, uh, which does also make, uh, you know, uh, gives you a little bit of flexibility um, in, to make sure that you can give the right size and the shape and all that kind of stuff uh, to your client. So, yeah, I hope that, I know this is not everybody's cup of tea, you know, doing this type of, uh, of, uh, of these jobs because it's not very creative. But, you know, at the end of the day, sometimes these jobs do help uh, bring uh, good money um, to your sales every month, you know. So if you can land a couple of clients with this, you know, it could be an ongoing job and it could be quantities and stuff like that. So it's, uh, you know, at the end of the day, I guess you have to do what you got to do uh, to get the bills, you know, get the bills paid. So, yeah. Um, I'll see you guys in the next video and I hope that everybody has a great day. Cheers.